Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome back, everybody. We'll go ahead and start with some uh, announcements this evening. And uh, first one's to uh, welcome back two of our CYCers and uh, nice, uh, you know, little jaunt up to Tennessee and, and back. And I heard uh, 12,000 folks there. 12,000 people. Your closest friends. They, they okay. thought it was uh, the highest uh, count, but actually we had more a few years ago. Yeah. All right. We had over 13 more. All right, well, I'm sure the singing and the fellowship was just horrible. <laughs> no, it was good. Okay. All right, uh, but uh, yes, uh, definitely welcome back. and. Uh, thank you for driving, arranging, and all that stuff. Mark. Good job. Along with your lovely assistants, whoever was able to help along the way. And, of course, our reminder to uh, continue to pray. Pray for each other. Pray for the work that's going on here. And, of course, uh, those that are on the list. And we've got uh, you know, a pretty good list. I, I did say uh, Faith uh, posted, I guess, on Facebook. I saw I didn't ask her about it yet, but uh, they did find that she did fracture uh, instead of just uh, a sprain. So she was wondering why I was hurting like that. But that's, there's a reason. Uh, so continue to wear uh, all the apparatus for uh, a few more weeks. And then of course, uh, Holly recuperating and uh, uh, Kathy again having uh, surgery to replace the shoulder. So uh, she was not able to report to with the uh, pitchers and catchers. She's going to be on the disabled list for a while. She was very disappointed in that uh, when I talked to her. Um, and then, uh, again, just keeping everybody uh, in, in our prayers. We have more in the bulletin. If you uh, get a chance to take a look at that, uh, I think there's a few more left in the back. If not, call Larry. He'll, he'll bring you one. <laughs> All right, and again, to continue with our... Uh, you know, Thinking about our, our prayers and who we're praying for, uh, our leaders, and, and then of course the uh, those that are being persecuted around the world. We'll, we'll talk some about that some tonight, and then of course the works that we are are helping and uh, working with uh, those in India and in Kenya and Costa Rica, uh, those that we are are friends with uh, or know, and of course even those we don't know uh, that are around the world that are uh, trying to live the Christian life and do what they're supposed to do as Christians. And a reminder, uh, uh, evidently, when we looked on the calendar, next month also has a first Sunday. And so we're going to have a, a luncheon uh, or a potluck dinner. Uh, so bring your lucky pots. And uh, we'll be eating next door at the annex. And uh, then, of course, having the singing afterwards. So no no evening service at 5, but uh, looking forward to being able to... Uh, have a joyful meal and make a joyful noise right after uh, singing together, worshiping God. Uh, and then we mentioned this this morning, uh, we got the uh, notice, and actually they, they sent us a letter saying we were in the, the top 25% of the folks that are using house to house or, or as far as percentage of, of uh, how many we have going out. So, and they said we, we sent out 14,246 copies of the house to house heart to heart. And of course that's you know, around this immediate area, and then we were able to expand that uh, you know, area again, still in Franklin County. But that's a that's a lot going out, and uh, continue to pray for the work that uh, as uh, we we keep throwing the, the seed out there, that it's going to find some good fertile soil. And of course, reminders about uh, coming together and opportunities to be able to study the Bible together, and also to be able to worship together. Bible classes at uh, nine on Sunday and seven o'clock on Wednesday. And then the worship service at uh, uh, ten and, and five on, on Sunday. So we're going to have uh, uh, you know a new guy uh, lead singing for us, uh, Steve, and uh, we're going to start off with uh, song number nineteen in the book and on the screen. Uh, so whichever way you want to look, then we have you covered. But uh, let's uh, worship together. I'm a little nervous. 
Lewis, so y'all y'all help me out here. <laughs> um, just kind of doing the math, I was thinking on that number because I know this so far this year we've or last several months we've done over three thousand yeah. uh, mailings, so that comes about eighteen thousand a year. Okay, so I, I mean that was for last year, so yeah. apparently we didn't start the whole year, so that'll go up about four thousand this time. <coughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, like Gary said, I keep praying for that. Uh, the seed is getting scattered. Uh, okay. Um, Paul, in his writing to the church in Colossae, in Colossae, he wrote to them and said, Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. And uh, this song reminds us truly of the power of Jesus' name in all things, and uh, uh, both in heaven and on earth, even as we were uh, talking about this morning, Matthew uh, 28. So, uh, truly, there is great power in the name of Jesus. Uh, and even uh, as we were looking at this morning, this Paul said in Acts 14, there is no other, Acts 4, Acts 4, there is no other name given among men in heaven or on earth that whereby we must be saved. So uh, there's great power in the name of Jesus uh, if we're on the right side of him. something strange were happening to you, but rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God in that name. I'm not ashamed to own my Lord, nor to be. the glory of 
Lord, our Father in heaven, we thank you for all the blessings you have given us during this day to hear your word and to be prepared to be here and to honor your son and the life that he gave upon the cross. And we pray that you'll watch after all those who have been mentioned who are sick and ill and may be recovering from different ailments or injury. We pray that you'll watch after those that are among our number who are active in studies and teaching others that there may be much good that comes from it, that others will know the truth of your word. We thank you for those who have returned and for those who were baptized at the meeting and that they will be able to continue a life of faithfulness to you, that many blessings will come their way. We pray that you'll help us as we strive to find those in this area with a good and honest heart who would be willing to hear your word and that we'll be prepared to teach them. We know that we need to each day look for those opportunities that we have, knowing that there may be many that come our way that sometimes we don't see. And we pray that you'll help us be wiser in finding those who need to hear your word. Thank you for the leaders we have here at Franklin County, and please continue to watch after them, that they may do much good among this congregation and among this area. We pray that you'll watch after the leaders of this com country, that they may make laws that will make it easier for Christians to be able to teach your word, that nothing will come our way that will make it harder, and that we will be able to carry out the work of your kingdom as we should. Watch after us as we continue to look around us for opportunities to teach in the foreign mission field, that those in the foreign mission field will do much good work and that we can help out in any way possible. Please bless us as we go through this life, that we may grow every day to be stronger, better Christians and willing to participate more and more every day in the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Next song will be on number 781, Wonderful Story of Love. Truly, as we think about um, the Bible, God's Word, think about what God is. God is love. Um, the whole Bible is a story of love. Uh, it tells us about God. And uh, Paul reminds us of the power that exists in that story. Romans 1 16 he said for I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek <coughs> wonderful story of love tell it to me again wonderful
song reminds us of the, the faith of our uh, of the fathers, our ancestral fathers in the faith and the challenge, especially those in the first century that they endured and they endured things that uh, are hard to imagine uh, and yet remain faithful and this is a song uh, a plea of ourselves to remind us of of the faith that they exhibited that we might have the same strength of faith as they should. Paul in his uh, uh, writing to uh, Timothy said, indeed all who desire to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted. And uh, certainly it is our prayer that we not have the persecution that our forefathers had, but this is the truth. has their passport, uh, Honda or otherwise, it just uh, doesn't matter. But uh, I, I know uh, you think Philippi is okay, great, we're going to jail. Uh, well, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be there eventually uh, in this particular story, uh, but uh, no uh, jailer discussion tonight. We're, we're going to talk about what happens in the time before Paul and Silas are dragged off to prison and uh, see what kind of lessons we can learn from there. So Acts chapter 16 and verse number 16, and I, I tried to make this as small as possible so that you could not read it, but I threw it up here anyway. Uh, now, hopefully you have uh, uh, yours you can read if, if you can't uh, see that, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. 
As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of uh, divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. And of course, uh, you can see in here, this is one of those uh, uh, verses where we know that Luke was there. And of course, we know he was, he was uh, also a, a, a short person because uh, he and Zacchaeus were we little people. Okay, well, no, it's, of course, he was there because he throws in the we, and so here, here he's, you know, we don't know who all was with Paul and Silas. We know Paul and Silas are the ones that get put in prison. Luke is also there uh, at this particular time, but we don't see him in prison. But uh, some bad things happen as they are on their way to the place of prayer. This uh, slave girl who had the spirit of divination followed uh, Paul and us crying out, these men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men are Jews, and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept a practice. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in uh, feet. Fasten their feet in the stocks. That's, uh, yeah, feet in stock. Okay, so, and then, of course, you know, uh, we also have this picture uh, provided by uh, Google uh, showing uh, feet and hands, but uh, they weren't going anywhere. There they were uh, being thrown in prison because they had done such a horrible thing by helping this girl out. And so we can go into uh, the gospel accounts and to, to be able to see how often Jesus was met with uh, sometimes the same thing. Of course, there were people that were completely amazed by what he did and the miracles that he performed, and then there were others that, well, we got to kill him. And that, of course, continued with the apostles and then, uh, you know, disciples that, that followed there in the first century. As long as they had these miraculous gifts, there were people, again, that were genuinely excited about the fact of being healed or you know, something small like being brought back to life. They were probably pretty excited about that. Uh, but there were also other people that decided, we don't like this. And so, no, we do not have these miraculous abilities to be able to do things and, and bother people in, in the same way that, that Paul and Silas did here. But when we start talking about the good news, uh, Jesus and wanting to be our, our Savior and freedom from sin and and staying away from hell and living in heaven for all eternity, there are some people that, well, they really don't like hearing that. And they really don't like what comes along with somebody that is following after that because then sometimes they act nice and, and do nice things and help people out, and that just bothers them sometimes. So what I want to do is look at Paul and Silas here I have, you know, in their adventure in Philippi. Uh, what kind of lessons can we learn from this? Uh, and, of course, we're going to find out some things about people and what we can do about uh, facing this particular situation in our lives. So the first thing we'll notice, uh, you know, if you're going to talk it, you must walk it. And, again, this was something that, uh, of course, Paul was uh, big on. Follow me. We put that extra little bit in the end after that. As I follow Christ. And so there, Paul was going around spreading the gospel. He would preach to a lot of people. But he was also walking a, a sermon as well. Because you could look at him and see that he actually believed what he was preaching and teaching. And so he was uh, living his life uh, the right kind of way. And so again, we see uh, in, in the first part of what we just read, and they're on their way to the, the place of prayer, and then they, they meet this girl that has this uh, demon in her and that is able to, to help these uh, people out to make some money off of her. And he, he helps her out. 
she is not doing what she wants. Uh, she is, uh, you know, helping uh, these uh, these men, you know, however they did that, whether it was uh, playing games, uh, card games, and she was able to guess, whether it was, uh, you know, being able to figure out what tonight's winning lottery numbers are, whatever it was, um, she was able to help them make money. But this demon was, was cast out. Uh, Paul was, uh, did that. And we see the same thing with, with Jesus. Kind of a similar situation in Luke chapter 4. Uh, let's look at uh, verse number 31. He went down to Capernaum, a, a city of Galilee. He was teaching them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching, for his word possessed authority. And in the synagogue there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, Ha! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. And so, well, not all advertising is good advertising. Because we see in these two examples, well, they weren't lying. This one, uh, the, the girl that was uh, uh, proclaiming who Paul and Silas were and uh, the message that they were bringing, the fact that it was uh, the truth and if you want to go to heaven, listen to these guys. Well, well that, was, that was all true. This one that was uh, uh, you know, talking to Jesus and saying, I know who you are. I mean, he knew exactly who Jesus was and spoke the truth. But... It was one of those things where, let's consider the source. Everybody else probably uh, knew this uh, girl that was possessed and what she was able to do. And you want somebody like that uh, pronouncing, uh, here are some facts. Well, okay. Same thing with the other guy that's uh, shouting out to Jesus, I know who you are. We know them, and we can tell that they're lying because their lips are moving. And here they are, even if they're pronouncing the truth, well, that's, uh, again, not the place that you want the truth to come from. That's uh, something given to us. That's something given to the church. Uh, we are uh, to be the, the light or the, the lampstand holding up the light. We are the ones that are, are scattering the seed. We are the ones going into all the world to, to preach the gospel. Not a demon. And so, uh, yes, message was true, but the messenger was sketchy, and that, of course, was fixed. And the same goes for us as well. Uh, again, we see Revelation 3. Uh, we've talked about the church at Laodicea before. They were just kind of there. They weren't hot. They weren't cold. They were just, well, they had the name on the outside of the church building, I guess. But Jesus said, either be hot or cold. This lukewarm thing is not working. And I'm about to spew you out of my mouth. Uh, they were about to be uh, taken out of the family because they weren't for him. Well, they said, well, we're not against you. Yes, but if you're not for me, then you are against me. And just being lukewarm is not enough. And so we look at uh, Jesus and, and Paul not wanting to hear the truth coming from this poor source that, that's us as well. We looked at uh, Romans 1.16. Uh, Steve read that a little bit earlier. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. There's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. And just, again, we've, we've talked about this before. It's just amazing. As, as God is, uh, has created the gospel for us, this good news. Now, yes, it includes the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. One of the most horrible stories. Because, well... Jesus died for me and you and everybody else. But one of the most amazing, wonderful stories because, well, Jesus died for me and died for you and died for everybody else. And just hearing that, that's, that's the power that God has. Here, let me give you this good news, and all you have to do is obey the gospel, and you too can be saved. We can put up a roadblock for God to have his word try to work around. Again, if we are pro 
proclaiming the gospel by our words and by our life, we are the devil's best friend. And it's going to be really, really hard for people to want to obey the gospel and be just like us. We can be detrimental to the Great Commission. No matter how much we go out and preach the gospel, if our life is not preaching the gospel, it becomes really, really hard for somebody to be able to set all that aside. Yes, the power is in the word, and if they will focus on that, absolutely. That's what God wants them to do, again, focusing on the word, obeying the word. But we don't need to be in the way. Thankfully, Paul was not. And, of course, he, he took somebody else out of the way that was that could have been detrimental. And so we see, again, there's, there's power in the name of Jesus. And uh, verse number 18, again, when, uh, when Paul was annoyed, I guess, day after day, this uh, girl kept coming up and, 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 you know, announcing who he was and what he was doing. And finally, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And so uh, there was power in, in the name of Jesus. We'll go ahead and throw this up here. We can't go wrong as long as what we do is in the name of Jesus. As long as we know what that means. Again, just because uh, Paul used a sentence and included the name of Jesus was not the reason that the demon came out. He was doing what Jesus wanted him to do. And so the same with us. Uh, just because we're doing something and then we throw the name of Jesus out there with it doesn't mean that it's okay. And you know, we may know folks like that, that just uh, every... Everything they do, they, they just keep saying the name of Jesus over and over again, and, and, and that's, that's their vision of what this means as far as doing everything in the name of the Lord. Well, let's just keep throwing the name of the Lord out there, and we should be good. Colossians 3.17, again, uh, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. It is not just using the name. It is, is this what he wants me to do? Do we have the, the scriptures to back this up? Is this, again, some people take it to the point of, I'm going to Ingalls to grab some groceries, and every time I put something up on there to make sure it's okay, I'm going to say the name of Jesus uh, when I put my bananas and my gallon of milk up there. and I'm doing this in the name of Jesus. And that's an extreme example. But unfortunately, that's the way some people think uh, they're okay with it, no matter what they're doing. Uh, let's take worship, for example. There are those that, uh, well, everything's worship as long as I'm throwing Jesus in the middle of it. Let's have a uh, dance recital. Uh, we're offering worship to Jesus as long as we keep using that word, using his name in the middle of this, and he is going to be so pleased with this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to... Uh, use his name every time I uh, uh, fix a car at my repair shop. And that is uh, doing things in the name of Jesus. As long as I keep using his name, then I can charge anything I want. We are to do what he wants us to do. We are to use his authority. That is what he wants us to do as far as everything we do in word or deed doing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we see that in Matthew chapter 7. Again, those that are there, uh, they are expecting to be welcomed into heaven, and, well, they meet uh, the roadblock called judgment. And uh, what Jesus said many are going to say in that day, uh, you know, they, they know him. Just saying, Lord, Lord, is not going to be enough to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Just saying, that, look at what I did in your name is not going to be enough. He gives the example that on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name, uh, cast out demons in your name, do many wonders in your name? And again, he, he doesn't deny that they were doing some things. He just says, I never knew you. Uh, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So just because they were doing something and throwing the name of Jesus out there, or I'm doing this because of Jesus, well, that wasn't enough. Something they were doing was not 
with the authority that he had given. And it cost them a home in heaven. So there is power in the name of Jesus. The power is not just saying his name out loud. You know, I think of, uh, well, it was a TV show when I was a kid a really long time ago. And now it's a movie recently, and it was a big thing. Was, all you have to do is just say the name, Shazam. And all of a sudden, you get some power, and, and suddenly you are a superhero. And they had a big, just say the name. And that is not the way to do things in word or deed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's just don't throw his name around. He's got an entire book full of instructions for us to be able to follow that gives us the authority to do whatever is written in there. I know this next one's going to come as a huge shock to you, uh, so I hope you're sitting down. People will manipulate others for their own benefit. I know. Gasp. But it's true. Uh, and we see that, of course, in uh, this particular story, verse number 19, when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace. They were, uh, of course, taking them over there. Uh, they wanted to take them into the marketplace to have a big celebration because she had been cured, and they were so excited about this. Uh, this evil spirit was gone. Not here is someone who is under control of somebody else. Whatever, again, she was able to do. It's like, you know, we can make money off of this. And I'm sure uh, that they, uh, as loving as they seem here in this story, I'm sure they took very good care of her, uh, had her a nice little room under the, the stairwell, and uh, let her come out every once in a while and to let her perform her magic. And uh, then they probably put her back in her room. This is mean. Uh, taking advantage of someone. And, well, thankfully, uh, Paul was able to be there to, to fix that. Uh, we see uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 11. I said, look at uh, verse number 12. What, and what I am doing, I will continue to do in order to undermine the claim of those who like to claim that in their boasted mission they work on the same terms as we do. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ, and no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light, so it's no surprise that his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. And so, there's some folks out there who say, oh, religion. I can make some money off of that. I mean, you look at, uh, we'll go you know, back to, uh, well, the, the Crusades. And here, uh, somebody wanted to be able to, you know, take back the Holy Land. And so it was like, I know what we can do. We'll, uh, we'll appeal to these uh, noblemen who have these armies and their knights themselves. And we'll say, you know, God has spoken to us and has told us, uh, commanded us to go into the Holy Land and take it back from these heathens. Well, okay, well, if God's telling us to do that, I guess we have to. And so there they go. Well, multiple trips. Lots of movies. And, of course, you know, we see the, the Dark Ages. And when people, um, well, they couldn't read the Bible because nobody spoke Latin. Except for the people who were controlling the scriptures. And here is what the Bible says. God wants you to give us lots of money. Look, it worked. God wants you to give even more money. You want forgiveness of sins. That will cost you. Uh, how much you got in your wallet right now? Over and over again, again, using Christianity and, and, and religion and to be able to use that to their benefit. I don't know that they had bank accounts, but you know, maybe fat wallets or, or large pots of money, whatever it was that they were collecting it. The Catholic Church was, well, again, they were filthy rich. 
And, and that's probably a, a pretty good description because they, they stole a lot of money from people, offering to sell indulgences. Uh, would you like to go ahead and send? You know, listen, if you go ahead and pay ahead, then um, we're going to introduce this thing called Fat Tuesday. And you can go ahead and just do whatever you want. And then we'll take care of that later. People will manipulate others for their own benefit. Of course, and, and like I so said, we see that here. We have uh, in uh, Jude. Uh, we'll, we'll go all the way to the first chapter. And uh, verse number 16. Uh, These are grumblers, malcontents, following their own sinful desires. They are loudmouth boasters, showing favoritism to gain advantage. Again, just, uh, there's, you know, throwing flattery out there, talking so nice about so, you know, we can get something out of it. Well, that's not exactly the way that God wants us to live. Most of the time you look at something like that, again, with, especially with uh, what he was also throwing in that mix, lies. Covering it up as, as flattery so that you can gain some type of advantage. First uh, Timothy uh, 6, uh, verse number 3 says, If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with godliness, he's puffed up with conceit, understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy, and for quarrels about words which produce envy, dissension, slander, evil suspicions and constant friction among, among people who are depraved in mind, depraved, uh, uh, sorry, deprived of the truth, imagining that godliness is a means of gain. Again, there's people who have figured out, I can use Christianity to my advantage. And if you don't believe me, I can give you some channels on your TV that you can look at at certain times and see some monstrous buildings and masses of people. Preachers with uh, multiple planes in their fleet and asking for more. And again, not that it's wrong to have lots of planes. Uh, Delta does. I don't, I don't think they're bad. But again, it, it's when people are manipulating others, keep sending me money. God spoke to me and wants you to donate as much as you can, even to the point of if you don't give this amount of money, then I'm going to die. We have to be aware of the word to be able to see the difference in truth and someone who is trying to manipulate us for their own benefit. We also have to be able to use our knowledge of the truth to hopefully help others. Here is the truth. Here's what the scripture says. Yes, I, I know your favorite preacher is saying this, and I know he is saying it in a way that really makes you feel sad. But let's go to the scriptures and be able to, to, to look at the truth and see what God says about it. He even says to look out for people that are doing exactly what this person is doing. Let me help you find the truth. Hey, it's not going to cost you anything. And again, another big surprise. Uh, Christians will suffer for doing good. And, well, we see that with Paul and Silas here. Again, we see what, what horrible thing they did. Uh, they were able to, to heal this girl. And to, to be able to free her from this spirit... Well, again, verse number 20, it says, When they brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men are Jews, and they are disturbing our city. And by city, I mean me. And by me, I mean my wallet. They have taken my source of income away. What are we going to do about it? They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. Yeah, that golden rule thing, there is nothing about ruling anybody else with that. But they keep talking about it. So... We can't do stuff like that. What horrible thing were they preaching that Roman citizens could not do? Well, other than, hey, don't worship Caesar. But uh, all the other things that are in there about helping neighbors and 
uh, you know, speaking the truth all the time and helping the, the poor. All these things that uh, Paul might have been talking about. How horrible that was. They had done one thing. They helped the girl. And we see the reaction from these, uh, her handlers, and how easy it is to stir up a crowd that's ready to be stirred up. The crowd joined in attacking them. Again, I don't know who all saw what happened. But here is they, they bring them to the marketplace and say, you know, something needs to be done with them. Oh, hey, here's an opportunity to beat somebody up. And it's okay because they're bringing them here for, you know, their punishment. I get to help. This is the, you know, worst in the Wild West. At least, you know, they were waiting around to, to see who was going to be hung. Uh, these were actually uh, partaking in it. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. The magistrates, the rulers, the leaders. And, uh, you know, here, uh, this is a uh, civilized group of people, that this city. And the leaders of the city said, oh, let's beat them. Tear their clothes off, get rods, and just start flailing. And that's exactly what they do. When they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safe. Which is odd, right? And listen, we're going to beat them, almost kill them. Listen, the only thing happens to them while they're in prison. Keep them safe. Because we're probably going to want to beat them again. Again, surprise, surprise, they did something good and something bad happened to them. Jesus said, uh, John chapter 15 and verse 18, If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. And of course, the world was not keeping his word. As uh, we read just a little bit earlier in, in 2 Timothy, uh, Paul uh, telling Timothy, uh, you however, have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness. So all those are really good things. Listen, uh, you, here I'm, I'm trying to live the life that God wants me to live in, and you've been following all that. Keep doing that. But along with all of these good things that he listed there, then verse number 11 says, you know, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, which persecutions I endured, yet from them all the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. So here, uh, words of encouragement. You are going to suffer. You've seen my life. You, you know exactly what I've been through. You, you've been with me for part of it. It's going to happen to you too. And anybody else who wants to live a, a godly life. Christians are going to suffer. And... Well, there's, there's a red flag opportunity. Uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the, the siren or, or voice that goes off in your head that says, Danger, Will Robinson, danger. If everybody's getting along with us, if everybody loves us, if everybody is in total agreement with us, something might be wrong. Because God doesn't lie. And this, of course, instruction from Paul, inspired by God. And so we see you know, different religious leaders around the world, and, well, they're, they're friends with everybody. Multiple religions, multiple world leaders, 
uh, massive followings, and most of the time you hear the message of, uh, we're all to get into heaven, we're just taking different roads. So everybody is fine just the way you are. Now, this is the way I prefer. Uh, if you want to know anything about it, I'll be happy to talk to you. But everybody else is doing other things, and that's okay too. Even though that's not what we read in the scriptures. If we are narrow-minded like our Lord, we're going to have enemies. As long as that narrow-mindedness is, I'm only going to do what the Bible says to do. If that is the mantra that's stuck in our head and it matches our life's actions, we're going to have some enemies. If we don't, we need to do some self-inspection. 1 Peter 4 and, and verse 12, again, this uh, reminder from Peter that there's, uh, you know, hard times are coming. <laughs> Don't be surprised. But coming from somebody who was, uh, well, an eyewitness of that because the suffering uh, that he went through, he, he, he went through a lot. The relationship that he had with Jesus was sometimes painful. And he rejoiced when that was the case. Because thinking back, all right, so Jesus did this for me. He died. It was a long, drawn out, torturous death. And he, he did that for me. I suffered some for him. That's something to rejoice about. Knowing, of course, that the suffering here that we go through in this life, that's nothing compared to how awesome it's going to be in heaven. Over and over again, we're reminded, sometimes we sing about it, heaven will surely be worth it all. That is what needs to be going through our mind, even as we are Christians suffering for doing good. And I, I know I bring up uh, a certain website uh, every once in a while, and I do more than just look at Fox News. But I'm going to talk about Fox News because uh, just I read an article this week that uh, talked about this thing uh, with, with Christians and what is going on in, in China. And you may have seen the same article, uh, but they are really, really pushing, according to their source in China, for Christianity to just be gone. On the outside, we're totally fine with you being Christians. Please register so that we know that you are Christians. <laughs> what could go wrong? So when I was a kid growing up, I, um, I know it's going to come as a shock to you, but I, I read a lot of comic books. And it was a particular one that said the X-Men, they were, they were mutants. They had these uh, crazy abilities. And, uh, well, the, the people who didn't have these abilities were a little nervous about all the people with abilities. And so, we don't mind if you have the abilities. We would just like for you to register them first. And, of course, then they would go after the folks with the powers and try to take them out or cure them. Evidently, uh, Christians aren't mutants, okay. But evidently, the same thing is happening in China where these state registered churches suddenly their leaders uh, disappear suddenly their websites that they use to uh, promote Christianity and, and teach people online suddenly there are problems with their website and they, they get shut down maybe they don't get registered soon enough, maybe uh, they uh, don't uh, dot their I's and cross their T's, uh, maybe they flip that around backwards, or however you do that with the letters in Chinese. But they are shutting down churches over and over again. They are forbidding them from meeting together, and what they said, again, they're using COVID as the reason for 
uh, you know, basically, yes, you can be a church. You just can't get together, can't see each other, can't worship together. You just need to be church in name only. Because we can't run the risk of having people getting together and cranking up COVID again. And the scary thing is, is that, again, coming from their source in China, their suggestion to Fox News is that they are pushing allegiance to the president. And it was almost basically to the point of pushing worship of the president in China over worship to God. And so how could somebody else be more important than the president? Uh, so if you're worshiping God, you can't be focused on making sure that you're following the instructions of the president. People are suffering and, and dying in multiple places around the world. This is just one of them. And again, it's just by calling themselves Christians and reading the scriptures and trying to do what the scriptures say. And some are losing their life because of it. And so when we talk about praying for congregations around the world and some of the things they're going through, well, this area is one of those areas that is very, very dangerous. Again, lessons that we learn uh, from Philippi and from other parts of the scriptures. Uh, I know this is not, you know, I'm, I would probably not do very well uh, writing fortunes for fortune cookies because I'm going to give you some facts here that we already know. Life isn't always easy. Sometimes we have to make some, uh, some hard choices. We have to deal with some consequences that sometimes make us feel bad. Sometimes they really, really hurt. Sometimes they cost us everything, including our lives. Again, here in the United States, we can still suffer. We can suffer financially. We can suffer you know, the loss of friends and family. Uh, we can suffer some embarrassment. And there are those that uh, will actually physically attack you or trying to teach the truth. But here's the question. We have to be ready to answer uh, because sometimes we don't get the warning of, hey, something bad is about to happen to you because you are who you are. Would you rather suffer with Christ for a short while or suffer without him for eternity? That is a decision that well, we see in the first century that, that they had to make. And again, some suffered for a short time because they suffered and then they died. And we see the same thing happening today in other parts of the world. We need to make that decision now what the answer is going to be when that time comes. We talked about some on, on Wednesday night uh, and, and, and we've had a lesson on you. Know, so what, what would you do in this particular situation? What, what, how would you act? What, what's your reaction going to be to someone persecuting you? We need the answer to that now. Where Where is our faith? So that we don't have to, well, hang on a second before you uh, pull the trigger on that gun. Let me think about what my answer is. We're probably not going to get uh, a timeout to be able to make our decisions. This is eternal life and death. Make that decision now. Are we going to do what God wants us to do or not? And so to help encourage us to make the right decision, we're going to sing this song, Who Will Follow Jesus? And I, I hope all of us can you know, raise our hand and say me. But again, it's more than just saying I know him. I can, I can spell his name. I've got a t-shirt with his name on it. I've got a bumper sticker that matches. This is um, following Jesus listening to his words, reading his instructions, and then actually putting them into practice, no matter the outcome. And of course that starts with obeying the gospel and then continues with following the gospel, following the good news, following his instructions, taking his yoke on us, letting him guide us into the way that he wants us to go. And if we have allowed something else to keep us from following Jesus correctly, well, we aren't following him anymore, and he is the only one that can lead us to heaven. The only other destination is heaven.
make right now, tonight, the time that you decide that you want to follow Jesus, knowing where you're going to be for all eternity. If there's something we can do to encourage you to, to make that right decision, to either obey the gospel for the first time or, or to come back to him, we'd love to, uh, to, to study with you, to answer questions, to pray with you, whatever it is that you need. We're happy to help, even now as we stand and sing. Who follow Jesus, standing for the right, holding up his banner in the thickest fight, listening for his orders, ready to obey. Who will follow Jesus, serving him today? Who will follow Jesus, who will make reply? I am on the Lord's side, Master, here am I. Who will follow Jesus, who will make reply? I am on the Lord's side, Master, here am I. Who will follow Jesus in life's busy ways, working for the Master, giving him the praise, earnest in his vineyard, honoring his laws, faithful to his counsel, watchful for his cause. Who will follow Jesus? Who will make me fly? I am on the Lord's side, Master, here am I. Who will follow Jesus? Who will make me fly? I am on the Lord's side, Master, here am I. Thank you again, Gary. That's a very, very good lesson. One that we need to be reminded of as well. Glad that all the folks that went to Tennessee made it home safely. And I guess everyone made it home safely. So. I, I guess. <laughs> we did. <laughs> Good to have you home again. Uh, this time, Dad's going to lead us in our closing prayer. Let's pray. Yeah. <coughs> Father in heaven, we're thankful to you for giving us the strength and giving us the determination to meet here tonight. We know that <clears throat> if we had not, if we had decided not to come, that we would not have the benefit of our worship and our study tonight. Thank you for uh, bringing our travelers home to us. We are thankful for the opportunities that they've had to have some uh, inspiring messages and, and uh, fellowship with a great number of people, of Christians at the same time. And uh, we know that has been good for each one of them. We're thankful for the lesson that we've heard tonight. We know that uh, there are many things that can get in our way of serving you. But we also realize that with our own uh, determination to live for you and live the kind of life that you want us to live, that we can overcome anything that the devil has to, to uh, tempt us with and to throw at us and to cause other people to uh, work against us in our endeavors to live the right kind of life. We realize that in our society today, there are so many people who are against your world, against your way, and we realize that more and more of them are gaining uh, political power, in other kinds of power in our nation. And we, we realize that you are in charge. Uh, we only hope that we can, uh, each one of us can overcome those obstacles. <clears throat> Be with us tonight as we go home. Be with us every day that we might live for you and set good examples before every person that we come in contact with. 